Welcome back. I'm sure you all know what infinite zoom effect is and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can do it with a basic example in stable diffusion. I highly recommend that you do this yourself because nothing beats coming up with your own interpretation of this effect. So I'll provide all the links in the description below but here is the infinite zoom extension from the GitHub page. And there is step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the extension and how to get it installed. So let's go ahead and look at how we would install that in Automatic 11.11. So in Automatic 11.11, click the Extensions tab, click the Available, load from this URL, and search for the Infinite Zoom extension so i already have it installed but if you don't have it installed you can click the install button let that install once it's installed you can apply and restart your ui when the ui has been reloaded you will have this tab at the top here infinite zoom it might have a few prompts already preloaded for you so you can go ahead and clear prompts and that'll clear all the settings and the prompts over here. You can also keep adding more rows. Word in a tree, at a different start step, and so on. And you keep adding rows for each of the prompts you want in the Zoom. Once you've got the prompts that you're looking for, you can export those prompts to a JSON file. And once you have the JSON file, you can reuse that over and over. So what I will do is I will actually import some prompts I have for this video. So when I do that, I get all of these prompts. This prefix prompt is added to each one of the individual step prompts, if I can call them step prompts. Um, and then if you want something uh, suffix for each one of the prompts, you can also add a suffix. And here's the negative prompt. Here is the sampler, ULA, the width and height of each image, which will be composed into a GIF. Sorry, it'll get composed into a MPEG-4, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep, MPEG-4. And then here is your guidance scale and your out paint steps. We go back to the GitHub page. We've completed the installation steps here. Now I have a few tips for us. The one tip here is make sure the model is an in-painting model and I, I will show what that means in a moment. Also in the settings mask flow parameter above zero will give you results that look like they've been hit by an ugly stick. Alright, okay, so that's interesting. We, we can have that at zero. And then uncheck the apply color correction. Okay, so let's go have a look at that. In stable diffusion, if we go to settings and you click on image to image, here's the apply color correction to that to so make sure that's unticked. Then we need this noise multiplier. So if you go to your user interface and the quick settings, make sure that you have initial noise multiplier added to your quick settings. Uh, and then lastly, we have the mask blur. So I've already done these steps for the settings, but you can go ahead, apply settings once you have them set up. We go back to infinite zoom in the mask blur i've set this to zero so we'll see what that does with the latent noise option selected okay before i actually click generate i want to show you two more urls which i'll add to the link in the description below here is one which is another example how to use infinite zoom with stable diffusion so i'll give give that link to you and then it's really good to also look at what in painting is and why we have in painting so i'll provide this example 
uh, this web page to you as well then you want to go ahead and find a model which is which has in painting so i'm using the realistic vision i have both the 5.1 VAE downloaded and the 5.1 in painting VAE downloaded and you can go ahead and add that to your stable diffusion installation so for just to demonstrate what does the realistic vision without in painting do let's go have a look at what that does so let's generate the video all right it's finished generating and you can see that there are these squares and it looks very box like then we can play it see what it, the final results are it, it doesn't look bad and uh, it's quite nice but we want to improve the transition from one image to the other image by using an in-painting model and the results will give us less of that box effect. The other thing I want to demonstrate here is you can see that it's 14 seconds and on the GitHub page it actually explains how the length of the video will be affected by the number of frames, the outpage steps and the length of each step. So what I've got is I've got 0, 1 and 2, 3 which are between 0 and 1, it's this prompt. From 1 to 2, it's this prompt. From 2 to 3, it's this prompt. Um, and so I just kept it simple, with one second in between. And I said from the last step, 12 to 14, I want it to be this, this step, okay? What I've also decided to do here is I'm doing a zoom in versus a zoom out. So that just re reorders the the prompts uh, for the generation so we'll start at 12 and we'll go down to zero when, you, when you're doing a zoom in so let's look at the in painting model and go ahead and generate a video for that okay we finished the video and let's have a look what it's done not bad now it has gotten better between the transitions because of the in painting but my prompts have not really helped remove that box situation perhaps in the first beginning set of images because what you want to do with your prompts is make sure that one prompt has similar image constructs as the second prompt um, but this is for just for demonstration purposes and I, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and try to do your own set of prompts to get those transitions from a you know, church to outside the church to a hallway um, and so on. Right. But play with each one, have a lot of fun. This, this was really exciting to do. That's all for today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, check out the links below in the description. As always, please support this channel by subscribing and clicking on the like button below.